Hello and welcome to another video in the course where we are learning about business strategy. In previous video we have discussed strategic capabilities, core competencies or however you call them. These are important so that our organization can survive on the market and at the same time be profitable and say be more successful. Now in this video we are going to talk about so-called green model for accessing organization's capabilities. Why do we need model for it? Well, there is a simple question. How can we assess which of the capabilities are important for us? And this is going to be exactly the topic of this video. We are going to look particularly at each of these and ask whether they are important to us. And this is an example of how it will look. So the RIN model stands for value, rarity, inimitability, and non-substituability. We are going to go through each of these. So under value, we will ask a question. Do capabilities exist that are valued by customers and provide potential competitive advantage? Rarity, do capabilities exist that no or few competitors possesses? In imitability, are capabilities difficult for competitors to imitate? And final one, non-substitutability. Is the risk of capability substitution low? So let's start with analyzing a value of some strategic capability. When it comes to value of strategic capability, I have one short definition that is, I think, very beautiful. Strategic capabilities are of value when they provide potential competitive advantage in a market at a cost that allows an organization to realize acceptable levels of return. Now, I see many entrepreneurs who are failing at two points within this sentence that I have just said. One is the value itself, the other one being a cost that allows for uh, acceptable levels of return. Now, not everything that we would like to do within our business, say as an innovation, as an improvement, will deliver a value. Why is it so? Because when we talk about value, we mean value to the end customer or to the end consumer. And let's make a simple example. For instance, we are selling hot dogs on the street and uh, uh, we are trying to purchase a new grill for making the sausages. Now, this new grill that we will purchase is going to consume much less electricity, so we will save on electricity bills. Is this a valuable strategic capability? No. Even though it has value for us as an organization, it doesn't have any value for the end customer. Unless the new grill is going to make better sausages or they are going to be produced faster, there is absolutely no value for the end customer. Essentially, the customer doesn't really care what is happening behind the scenes, usually. He cares only about the service or a product that he receives. So. When we are creating the value, we have to make sure that this value is created or we think about it as a value for the end consumer. Now, secondly, costs. Um, when we are purchasing some piece of equipment or investing in the improvement of our service, um, it's quite easy to think about costs when it is a purchase. So for instance, if we were purchasing this grill, we could simply see, okay, it's $2,000. That's going to be a cost of my strategic capability, assuming it was creating a value for a customer. Now, there are many entrepreneurs who are forgetting that even some other improvements that we are trying to do, which doesn't directly create cost, it creates indirect cost. For instance, uh, so we have these hot dog stands and uh, we have an employee who is selling the hot dogs. Now, we are thinking about strategic capabilities and we are like, hmm, okay, I want to create a value for the end consumer. I will now instruct my seller so that he holds a small conversation with every customer that comes to the stand and purchases a hot dog. Now, I'm going to instruct him to do so and it's going to take, let's say, uh, one minute to hold this conversation. Well, there are no direct costs associated with this improvement and it's clearly going to be an improvement because the customers will now be happy that someone has a small talk with them in the morning when they are purchasing a hot dog. Well, the part about the value is true, but we should not forget the cost. The cost will be the time of our employee. Now, let's try to calculate it. Uh, the conversation is going to take one minute and we are selling, let's say, uh, 100 hot dogs during a day. So that's going to be 100 minutes per day. There are 20 working days, so that's going to be 2000 minutes 
which could add up to something like 35 hours or something like that if I'm calculating correctly. Now, that's the labor time, 35 hours. If we have uh, average hourly salary $20, that's gonna add up to something like $800. Well, I, I guess my calculations are a bit off, but maybe $800 a month. That's our investment, that's our cost. So now we have to put it by side the improvements or, or the value that is created for the consumer that they will be more happy with the small talk that they hold in the morning to $800 a month that it's going to cost us on the labor hour. Now, why is there a cost on labor hour? Because the employee, while making the small talks, he could do something else. He could be cleaning the grill and cleaning the stand. So there is always a cost associated with some improvements that we are trying to make. Now, that is about the value of strategic capability. We have to think about the value to the end consumer and about the costs associated with it. The second letter R stands for rarity of strategic capability. Let's go for the definition. Rare capabilities are those possessed uniquely by one organization or few others. I think this is quite easy concept to understand. We should be different or our products should be different than the products of our competitors. Uh, yet it is not so easy. Just to be different doesn't mean that you are useful. So there are two important points. We have to meet customers need. So we have to be unique in a way that is valuable for a customer. Let's imagine that we are uh, producing the best accounting software in the world. Well, considering that we have a hot dog stand that doesn't really matter for our customers. We are rare, we are unique. None of our competitors will uh, try to produce the best accounting software. Well, because the, we are all selling hot dogs. So being a unique doesn't mean that you are useful. Second point, sustainability. If we are, if we are, if our strategic capability is rare, we need to sustain it. We need to create a business model around it so that this rarity that we possess will be sustainable over time. Well, if you remember, there was this big question, the big headlines in the newspapers. Will Apple survive without Steve Jobs? Because he himself as a personality was so unique in the eyes of consumers, in the eyes of the world, that uh, people were simply scared that once he died and this rarity was diminished, uh, will the company sustainably produce and perform so well as it has before of his death? So you see, we need to meet customers' demands and of course think about the sustainability of our rarity. That is the rarity of strategic capability. The third letter I stands for inimitability. Let's go for the definition right away. Inimitable capabilities are those that competitors find difficult to imitate. Well, what can be difficult to imitate? If we think of some hardware or equipment or machinery, those are things that are usually easy to imitate if we don't have some great patterns. So if we are unique just because of our machinery, location, factory and so on, this is not a, a strategic capability that would not be easy to imitate. Uh, our competitors can just purchase the same machinery as we do. They can have a location same as ours. So you see, this is not that great for us. Let's think further. Is it people? Well, that's better because people are, some, some great minds are just within our research facility. So that's better. But people can still leave our company and join the competitors. Well, maybe the competitor's HR department can just run a special campaign to attract our employees so that they can take the strategic capability that we have within our employees. So people as employees that's still not really the best strategic capability that would not be possible to imitate. Now, what is the ultimate strategic capability that cannot be easily imitated? That is organizational culture. It's so intangible and so hard to copy or transfer to other organization that this is considered the strongest strategic capability that we have. If we are able to create great environment for our employees so that they feel motivated, they feel thankful to our organization, that will remain as a sustainable, unimitable competitive advantage for us. So keep in mind organizational culture. 
Now for the last point, which is non-substitutability. We have been discussing substitutes already in one of the previous video, where we had an idea to make a business with carpooling service. There are two cities close to each other and we want to offer a carpooling service uh, that will be great for business travelers maybe because we have to keep in mind that there is a substitute to our product which is train. It's not our direct competition but it can provide the same value to our customer just by different means or slightly different value. Now when we are thinking about strategic capabilities we have to make sure that these are non-substitutable. Now, there are two ways how uh, our business or our strategic capability can be endangered by substitutability. First of them being product or service substitution. Imagine that we have spent years designing a, a great postal service. We are a local postal company and we are delivering letters, packages and everything else to the customers in our area. And we have spent years designing this business from the first to the last bit and it's the most perfect postal service of them all. Now, we can get our product or a service substitute very easily by, say, email communication. Email communication all of a sudden started to be a thing and no one is really sending letters anymore. So our business will go obsolete just because of a substitute that arrives. We have to be really careful about it. Now, secondly, there is competence substitution. Um, again, let's think of an example. Uh, the competence itself will get substituted. So we have a factory and we do our best, follow the guidelines and create the strategic competencies really well. So our organizational culture uh, and people within our organization are our strategic competence. So we have the most skilled workers around and we are producing our products in the best possible quality. Now, what can happen? A competitor comes to the town and he will do the same thing, however, with machines. So robots will now replace the workers. Well, even though that we have best workers around, they cannot be better than the machinery, than another robot performing their task. So you see, our competence in itself will get substituted. And that has been everything from the remodel. Keep in mind these four points that we have discussed. Always ask the questions about value, rarity, inimitability, and non-substitutability. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos.